Previously on Quest Friends, The Cookie Crew. That's my car over there. If something happens to her, you personally will be held responsible. No food, no dirty shoes, no fire. Very fair rules. You know, I know Anastasia's trying to handle things in like a different way. I know that normally your specialty is extracting information, but I think that you'll be able to twist that around to sell cookies. Sticking pipettes in people's heads and pulling out knowledge. Very intrusive. Wait, is that why we're here? This might be going a little, a little, a little much. Are you guys, are you guys... Sure you're up to the task? Of driving cookies? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I've never been more sure. I have a curiosity. Olivia does. What does everybody look like? That's right. I never gave you a chance to like describe your characters because I was like super excited to get into the game. So if you want to take a moment to describe all your characters uh, while they're eating dinner, that sounds like a good thing to do. I I, I can start. Hannah is really tall. She's got uh, her hair is cut really short. Uh, because getting long hair and a mechanic, it doesn't work. That's no good. So it's very short. Uh, she's hold, it's, it's held back with like a bandana headband. She's very tall and she's tall, dark and gorgeous is what I wrote down on my own thing. Since I get to choose, I get to decide. She's wearing coveralls and uh, she's zipping them up because it's getting a little chilly. All right, I can go next. Uh, Araf is just a little... A little shorter than average. She's kind of dressed in a casual uh, uniform, you know, not necessarily the, the best she has, but, you know, um, so that she still looks professional. And she has her cloak, which is basically like a Doctor Strange cloak, and it only billows when it's indoors. So right now, even if there's wind going on, it's just like perfectly still. And then she's got sort of shoulder length, silver-ish straight hair, basically not complicated at all, stuff she doesn't really have to worry about. and sort of golden eyes and a pleasant face. What's up? What's good with you, Ig? Ig is kind of really unremarkable figure, <laughs> but she's ridiculously tangled hair. She's not taking care of it. She like stores stuff in there. <laughs> it's fine. If she finds a shiny rock, it goes in the <laughs> hair until it falls out. Feather sticks straight up. Um, so her hair is like her jewelry box. <laughs> and also hoard. Yeah, but visually unremarkable, which she combats consciously by making all her movements way too exaggerated. I'm glad you all got to describe yourselves. Because I already knew what you all looked like, so I just forgot that the listeners wouldn't. Okay, so you're eating and then um, clean up and turn in. Is there anything else anyone wants to do? Uh, I'm going to check on uh, Red Mary, see how her engine's looking. She's looking good. Great. All right. Uh, Olivia doesn't know much about cars, but Hannah Lord does. Just make it all up. Oh, okay. So here's the, the double mutterer. Uh, it's very important to keep... Uh, <laughs> she pulls the top off of a certain pipe. It doesn't look like... it. I guess it doesn't look... The engine doesn't look like a modern engine, so it's fine. It's like... It's like... It's very Dr. Seuss. <laughs> so she opens up one pipe that looks a little bit like one of those party crackers. She opens it up, and there's a large silver coin. This is very important for the double mutterer. It maintains the balance of the HQ. Okay. Right, I pop the trunk... Uh, I pop the uh, uh, hood back down. Uh, alrighty, so there are three people can sleep inside of the van. I have a, uh, a, a cot I can roll up if y'all want to sleep, uh, inside. Madeline will take the cot. Does anyone like to cuddle? Uh, hard pass. <laughs> Handler is gonna explain to you guys how to unroll the bed inside of the, it, the bed sleeps too, and then the front sta- the front chairs, one of them spins around so you can sit and kind of recline. So somebody's bunking together. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a heavy sleeper. It's not a problem. All right. So just so I'm clear, Arif and Ig are taking like the back <laughs> double. Yeah, it's like a double, large double. Like a couch that folds out into a double bed is what I meant. Like a car yeah, seat. That's right. Okay. Arif has like a sleeping bag too that she's going to roll out to uh, like her own comfort or covers and things. I'm so sorry. Sometimes I kick, but mostly I just cuddle <laughs> in my sleep. There's like blankets and stuff. They're just heavy. Uh, everything's functional, but not necessarily cozy. <laughs> is it nice outside? 
Nice starry night. <laughs> yeah, you've all got like bedrolls and stuff too, so you can supplement anything. What's this area like? Uh, yeah, it's nice. It's not raining or anything. Uh, you have camped by like, you're by the coast. You're not like directly next to um, the lake. Like you're not close enough that it would be dangerous, um, but you're next to <laughs> the bay. So yeah. the water is, um, if you're facing the road towards the empire, the water is going to be on your right. And then there's going to be a forest on your left. It's not super thick unless you were to go more <laughs> than like 30 feet in. Isn't that funny? That's just how I was picturing it. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. So you've got water on one side of you, pretty close. And then a forest on the other side. What's the cardinal direction? So we, I imagine we're going north. Uh, you are going... Is the path on the ocean side or the forest side? Like, the the road? Yes, you're correct. You are going south. Oh, that's right, you're going to Pike's Head, which is directly south. I forgot you were going to the Empire itself. Pike's Head is directly south of Gladys. Handelor, are you taking the recliner seat? No, uh, Madeline can sit in that. Uh, is Ma- Madeline, is that it? We have been driving for hours, I just haven't cared to learn. <laughs> uh, Madeline can sit in that. Uh, and I have a little, a little low cot that I'm going to set up uh, underneath the tent thing. Okay, um, before you all turn in, Madeline is going to approach Hanalore, uh, and say, Hey, um, the Red Mary doesn't have anywhere to, like, store things safely, does it? Uh, like a safe? The glove compartment is, uh, bullet, laser, and diamond proof. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then she'll take out the, like, non- non-aggression pack that she wrote. Um, it's in, like, a very fancy envelope. Okay, I'm going to stuff it very carelessly <laughs> into the glove <laughs> When you do that, she'll go, ah! Like, Damien in Mean Girls, like, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's, it's fine. Oh, I found a it's map. It's fine. Oh, isn't that fun? <laughs> we'll look at that later. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know I had that in my book. Okay, yeah, there's like a bunch of napkins and stuff in there, too. So I'll just kind of shove those aside. <laughs> That's fine. And, and uh, pop it shut. And, uh... The key function of the Red Mary is sort of embedded in Hanalore's palm. Okay. So uh, she locks and unlocks it herself. Okay, perfect. So if no one has anything else they want to do, everyone's going to turn in? Yeah, I'm good too. For now. I imagine Ig sleeps hot. Like she's just going to be like, <laughs> like she's, heat. Yeah, like she's just going to be like sweating and like uncomfortable. No one likes to sleep with Ig. <laughs> like a tiny little, like a little firebox. Yes. Yes. I'm listening to the sounds of the sea and the night. Yeah, it's really nice. Like the amb- like the ambient noise. Like, I thought just a nice place. It's very peaceful. <laughs> hoot, hoot. Hoot, hoot. <laughs> ah. You do hear one more sound at about... Oh, dear. 3 a.m. And that is just a giant thump on the side of the Red Mary. Ah! Uh, Madeline is startled awake. I'm going to say it startles all of you awake. It was very hard. Yep. The the van is fine. It's not tipped over, but it was a hard hit. I will jump out of bed and get to the door as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, Madeline is also doing that. Just gonna run over there. Uh, So if you all get outside, there is a ship pulled up alongside the coast, and it is flying a flag you would recognize as an Anquan pirate flag. Um, There are three women standing aboard the boat. The one on the far right has like a pink pixie cut and her hand is glowing blue. Uh, The one in the middle has a blonde ponytail and she has eye makeup, like raccoon eye makeup on her eyes. And she is leaning casually on a club. And then the third one on the left um, is dressed mostly in yellow and she has dark brown hair that's like a side pony. Uh, The one on the right with the pink hair well, yeah, well, look at this, girls! A fully loaded caravan, guarded only by a few hapless travelers. Let's make their load lighter, huh? I'm Poppy. The middle one will say, I'm Susan. And the one on the far left says, and I'm Jean Quill. And together, we're P, B, and J. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm getting like a Powerpuff Girls vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's what it's meant after. <laughs> and then Madeline will point out PB and J, but the middle one was named Susan. <laughs> Poppy and Jean Quill throw up their hands and groan, and they'll both say simultaneously, "Cause Susan, you ruined it again. Every damn time." And Susan will say, "Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's black-eyed Susan." And she gestures to her eye makeup. It's black-eyed Susan. Oh, it's black-eyed Susan. Together, PB and J. And Poppy and jean are still like, God, groaning. And Susan's going to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't named after a fucking flower. Anyway, we're here to steal your shit. I love her. <laughs> These are my favorite NPCs. 
So with that, um, you will notice, I'm just going to say, now that they have made their grand entrance, that there is like an icicle poking out of the Red Mary. <gasps> so what? Oh, no. There's like an icicle poking out of the Red Mary. <laughs> ah! I'm going to try to stand in front so Hanalore can't see it. <laughs> and um... I could sense it in my body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's pretty... Like... It's up there. Like, it's high. She aimed high. Is everyone out of the van? Yes, everyone's out of the van, standing I, there. I'm, I'm shutting the doors and... It's locked. <laughs> uh, and then before um, Poppy can fire a second icicle, Madeline will say, Wait, you woke us up before stealing our stuff? And Poppy will say, We like to be honorable about it. This isn't honorable. You're, you're hurting my van. I'm trying to pull... I'm going to try to pull the icicle out. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want to roll for that? That's going to be a might roll. My, I got a natural one. <laughs> so like, not only, so you go to move it, but it's ice, so you just slip off of it immediately. It's so cold. Oh, I, I fall in and drive it for the spike further into the body of, of <laughs> Oh my god, no. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, Madeline will pop out her shoes again, which she wore to bed, because she is who she is. Uh, and then say, bring it on. You wore your shoes? She wore her shoes. It's not important. We'll talk about it later. Susan will go, hold up. I knew you looked familiar. Jean-Claude, well, Jean-Claude, well, isn't this that upstart roly derby roller derbier who beat you at the derby in Capron? Jean-Claude's eyes will widen. Murder line. Madeline's eyes will narrow. jean kill. <laughs> and jean will say... I knew I'd run into you again someday. This time I'm not going down. And before anything else happens, I need you all to roll initiative. Get out of here, Ellie. <laughs> also, any initiative tasks are one step harder for me. So that's a thing. Yep, sure are. <laughs> Why? Uh, I got a 17. You got a 7. Got an 11. It's just straight d20, right? Yeah, just straight d20. And none of you have bonuses or anything except for Ig, who has the opposite of bonus. <laughs> a handicap. A takeaway. <laughs> yes, I do. All right. Hanalore's got a 17. Uh, Cassidy, you got a, an 11? Okay. And then... You got a 7. You got a 7. Without my inability. Okay. Uh, Ig, I'm rolling that you... You're going to go last. Okay. <laughs> There are reasons for this. Okay. So, Hanalore, you are up first. Okay. Uh, Hanalore has a, a large, like a big wrench uh, strapped to her side. She is in her PJs, but it was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that it was underneath the cot. So, the, it's like a big wrench. It'll function as a club. She's going to go up to Poppy and just swing and batter up right for the chest. Okay. Uh, roll an attack for me, which is also just a D20. Uh, that's seven. I'm, I'm using, I'm mighty though. I have a 14 might. Does that help? It does not. But you can, as a reminder, take effort to lower the difficulty of tasks. I'd like to do that then. I'm very serious about smacking her in the chest. Okay, you want to add one tier to hit? You roll the seven. That is still not enough. So with a mighty swing, um, Poppy is just going to like like put ice in front of her and then move on the ice away from your wrench. So that she moves a little bit quicker. <laughs> uh, and Poppy is in fact... Up next. So she is going to fire an icicle at you. Uh, roll for defense. Nine. Nine? Okay, yeah, that'll work. Uh, she's next to the Red Mary right now, so she's going to fire the icicle at you. It will just barely, like, graze your sleeve. Uh, but we will fire off back, like, into the ocean and just hang out there. Uh, Susan is up next. Susan has stayed on the boat, and she is going to, like, flip her club up so that the narrow part is aiming at you because her club is also a gun. And she's just gonna fire her club gun from the ship. And she is going to fire it at... Well, seeing that uh, Poppy's got Hanalore covered, she's gonna fire it at... Don't you dare. Aerith. <laughs> <laughs> I'm daring, so you gotta roll a defense. D20, right? Oh, seven? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Um, her bullets are, like, tiny flowers. They look like daisies. <laughs> Um, so, like, this spinning daisy is just gonna come out of her club gun, and it will hit you, it'll hit your shoulder, but it's not, like, a bullet that's gonna stay there now. It'll, like, hit and then dissolve into, like, daisy dust. Oh, dear. Uh, but that is going to be three points of damage. Gotcha. To your mic pool. Okay. 
who is up next? Uh, Madeline's up next. Madeline. Uh, Madeline has her little heelys out. She is going to go after Jean Quill, who is coming from the side. Um, she is going to skate up to the Red Mary and then use it parkour oh. style to like turn around really quickly to oh, <laughs> get her speed and momentum so that she um, will try to nail Jean Quill. We're going to have to do some therapy sessions for Hannah Lore. In the face. Jean Quill. Oh, it works. She, Jean Quill is down. Jean Quill goes next, though, so she's going to pop back up and then do like a cartwheel uh, over Madeline. Uh, she'll take a jab, but she will she will miss. And now we have Ig. Um, Ig's going next? Ig is last. What am I going? <laughs> you went before Madeline and Jean Quill, so just pretend oh. that happened. <laughs> I would like to use my onslaught attack. Uh, mind slice. On who? Susan. Susan, okay. It says it inflicts two points of intellect damage. Right. Yep. And I'm going to attack her, her insecurities about her name and failure to... Wow. <laughs> failure to properly... Let's get right to the heart of the matter, y'all. Yep. Wow. Because clearly that's very important to her. Stone cold. Oh, roll for me to see how that affects her. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm into it. This is just for me to decide how she's going to take it. Just a d20? Okay. Oh, gosh, it's a four. The four? Okay. Um, <laughs> Not very good at insults, I guess. As you're insulting... <laughs> in- <laughs> it's your first day out. As you're insulting Susan for her inability to remember the nickname that she forced upon herself. <laughs> um, Let's just make her more angry. <laughs> Yes, exactly. She's going to get more angry. <laughs> Dang it. So she's going to recock her club gun. But it's, the cock sounds distinctly louder than the first time. Uh, All right, so now we are down to Ig. But I still got the damage in, so hey, <laughs> Who's winning now? Still then. It remains to be seen. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so Susan's still on the boat. Susan is still on the boat. Jean Quill and Poppy are, like, on either side. Like, if you and Hanalore and um, Arif are in the middle there. Yeah. They're on either side of the Red Mary. Um, because I know what I want to do. Yeah, no, I'm just going to do it. Because um, <laughs> there's something I could do that would um, eliminate potential consequences. Okay. But um, can I spray my flame retardant and use my shroud of flame? At the same time? Y- yes. Yes, but successfully doing your shroud ability is going... What are you spraying the thing on? I just... You know what? Screw it. That's just me as a player. It wouldn't care. There okay. we go. I would like to use my Shroud of Flame ability, which um, costs one int. And I land on fire for 10 minutes, and I get plus two armor, and I give enemies, enemies plus two damage, if I do it successfully. Okay. Um, do you want to move anywhere? Because I that's an action, so you can't do an attack, but you could move somewhere else if you wanted to. M- mostly I just wanted to say something to them. Yeah, you can do that. I would like to say, I know that you said when you arrived that we were just hapless travelers in this van, but I think what you didn't realize was that we were warriors and fierce ones at that. I think you might want to rethink attacking us. (laughs) And then I want to use my Shroud of Flame. All right, you do it. I'll have them respond when we get back to uh, Poppy's turn. What? Well, um, don't I have to roll for it? Your Shroud of Flame? Yeah. Oh, no, that's like your focus ability. So I'm going to rule you can just oh, do that. Oh, cool. But it costs intellect, right? To be able to do it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Well, if I don't have to roll for it, then I don't have to worry about it succeeding. Woo! You're good. I start myself on fire! Excellent. <laughs> All right, so now we are back to Hanalore. Okay, I'm going to try to hit Poppy again. Okay. Ten. Ten? Ten will just about get her, but Poppy's pretty fast on that ice. Uh, In addition, Poppy is very interested that Ig has just lighted herself on fire. (laughs) Uh, And Poppy will, like, understandable, ice on closer to her and be like, oh, honey, I welcome the challenge. And then she's going to fire. It's not an icicle blast this time. It's like a waterbending blast at Ig's, like, shroud of flame. So Ig, roll a defense for me. And you get plus two defense. Yeah, I... I also just want to clarify that when she does that, I say, oh, cool. (laughs) 19. 19, yeah. Okay, so the water will actually just, like, evaporate from the sheer heat of your flames before it can even douse them. And Poppy looks very impressed. (laughs) All right, uh, then we're back to Susan, who is, like, pissed. 
Yes. Aerith <laughs> mentally insulted her. So she's angry and confused. She just cocked her gun. It's very, very, it's like distinctly louder. And she is going to fire it straight at Aerith. <laughs> so Aerith rolled defense for me. Defense was a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> We're, no, we're, do, we're off to a great start. Just we're do, we just woke up. I know? just woke up. I'm not used to this sort of combat. <laughs> All right. This one is going to nail you straight in the stomach, Ow. and it is going to, like, be so forceful that it will push you back so that you hit the Red Mary. Oh, no. Uh, for an additional two points of damage. Oh. Ow. So two more on the might, and I'm going to just groan. Oh, uh, sorry, Hannah Lore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is your turn now. I didn't forget this round. My buzzer, which is like a little wrist launcher that launches like flying spinning blades. Like hops? And that's Yeah, it's like hops. Oh, cool. Mine hops looks different, but it's this the buzzer disc to the same. Yeah. Yeah, it's whatever's listed. I was excited when you chose that. I was like, yay! <laughs> it's a fun one. And it, it seems very airy. One of my favorite weapons. And go ahead and shoot off a couple more at Susan. Okay, roll. Well, this time I got a 17. <laughs> So I'm feeling a lot better now. A 17, wow. Now we're cooking. Yeah, your buzzer disc will hit, and that will cause how much damage is about two points? Two points of damage on... Susan. Susan. This is just regular, not intellect damage. Yeah, this is just like physical damage. Yeah. Because the mind, the mind slice one was intellect. Poor Susan. Yeah, she's fine. She tries so hard. She did special makeup, and now she's being picked <laughs> on. She's just the Achilles heel of the group, and that's what Arif is good at poking at. Wow. <laughs> She'll be fine. The house divided against itself. All right. Speaking of Achilles <laughs> heelies, oh my gosh, Madeline God. Uh, is up. And she is <laughs> still skating. Um, she is actually going to start skating. She's going to ignore Jean Quill and start skating toward the ship. Ooh. Uh, where she's going to go after Susan to get sink it. Oh, okay. That that works too. Nuisance out of the way. Uh, she's not thinking of that right now. She's got her heelys and basically nothing else. <laughs> uh, but her heelys are cool. So she is going to jump onto the ship and do like a kicking arc. And then as she does that, um, a small bolt of electricity will come out of Ooh. her, like her heely shoe. And she's aiming for Susan's face. Uh, she doesn't hit Susan's face. She. Yeah, that would have hurt. Will like arc over her, but she's on the ship now. Uh, and then Jean Quill is up. Jean Quill is going to do a cartwheel and head towards Aerith. What did I do? <laughs> so fancy. I know. She's she's just flipping everywhere. Everyone's so lithe, and Hanalore is just trying to club people with her fucking wrench. She's very lithe. And I'm just going <sighs> to... So roll defense. All right. So she is attempting... Yes, she's attempting to jab you. Uh, she doesn't have a weapon. Just her hands. I got a six. You got a six? <laughs> All right. She will... So you're like slumped against the Red Mary because you just got hit in the stomach with Susan's daisy bullet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and she is going to jab you in the oh. legs. Like she's going to hit one leg and then cartwheel over you and then hit the other leg. Yeah. Okay. And you feel like standing up would be more difficult. Difficult if you were to try. They feel very jelly-like. Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, and we are back to Ig. Um, okay. So, Aref is on the ship? No. No, uh, Madeline is on the ship. Okay. But Aref just got attacked. Yeah, I'm just Aref, she's yeah, shot. She's slumped against the, <laughs> against the van. Oh, against the van. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. I should just go, like, make sure you don't get shot again. <laughs> I'm fine. Again. Wait, I could roll under the van if I really need to. <laughs> There's a clearance for that. <laughs> I want to roll under the van. No. Um, I'd like to go over and... um. You're also on fire still. Yeah, I am on fire. You're also on fire and Poppy is like a threat, in, like a threatening presence. She's still next to you. So Poppy's the one with the magic that I fought. Yes, Poppy is, the, is like the water nano. Yeah. I would like to uh, take out my baton and point it at Poppy and say, Nano to Nano, you don't want me to use this. <laughs> Hanalore is hiding her face. Roll an intimidation. <laughs> Are you good at intimidation? Let me just see. I don't think so. Can I glare behind her as well to help? I will allow that to be a part of action. <laughs> yeah. but, okay. Cause like, to be fair, I'm on fire, so yes. like. Uh, and you're aiming a wand at her. Uh, roll me a roll me a d20. Do you want to put effort into it? Yeah. 
I already rolled, but I wanted to. Oh, okay, no, go ahead, because I didn't know you had rolled. So, uh, yeah, you applied one to your effort? Yeah. That's minus two from your intellect, okay. Yep, uh, yeah, because I have an edge in intellect, and I rolled a ten. Yeah, roll the ten. Okay, okay, yeah. Because Aerith is helping you by glaring behind uh, her. Aerith doesn't look super intimidating <laughs> because she's slumped against a van and, like, her legs, but you specialize in intimidation and, like, Ooh, putting on a brave face. Oh, yeah. I interrogated people for a living. For sure. So, like, and the slumping look actually kind of makes you look even we more terrifying this. the way that, like, dolls do, you know? Oh, gosh. And this combined with fire. And yeah, the light coming off of uh, it must be very dramatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and I mean, Poppy's water just, like, evaporated before even touching. Yeah. Ig. So she will take a step back and kind of put like a wall of ice between you and her. Am I on the same side of it as her? Yes, you are. Ooh. You are behind her. And we are back up to Hanalore. Okay, uh, I'm going to hit her again. <laughs> <laughs> With your wrench? Yeah. Do you want to put effort into it? Uh, 11. 11? I don't want to. You don't want to? Okay. Uh, no, because it, cause it 10 hit before. <laughs> a 10 didn't hit, a, but a 9 worked for defense is what happened. Ah. Uh. So the wrench <laughs> unfortunately missed again because Poppy ah, is just... Can I at least clobber it into the wall of ice? Yes, you can do that. I will, I'll rule that like as you go around, she'll just step aside, but um, or she'll duck. She'll duck as your, as your wrench comes and you will shatter the wall of ice. So it's only like to your knees now. Awesome. It's significantly less useful than it was before. We're up to Poppy's turn. Poppy will... Poppy is going to remembering how enraged Handalore was earlier is going to fire another icicle at the Red Mary just because she's mad and has nothing else to do. So another icicle will lodge itself in the Red Mary, oh, this one slightly lower. My stars. I've been wondering what Handalore's class would be, and it's now very clear to me that she is a van-based <laughs> barbarian. Barbara Van? Barbara Van. Barbara Van. Um, and then we are back to Susan, who is facing off with Madeline. Um, Get her. She's just, Madeline is now like an immediate threat on her ship. So she is going to fire, and she will hit Madeline square in the face. Oh. Uh, Madeline just goes down. She's out. Yeah. Madeline, God. <laughs> again. I really hope you're enjoying the second part of the Cookie Crew, the part that wasn't supposed to exist because this was supposed to be a one-time special short. But we at Quest Friends are all glad the Cookie Crew turned into this multi-episode miniseries, so we hope you are too. Today's call to action is part announcement, part request. Quest Friends had its one-year anniversary last week, so to celebrate, we're hosting a Q&A session streamed live on our Twitch account on Friday, October 5th at 8pm CDT. That is less than a week from now. We're very excited. If you'd like to submit any questions, feel free to submit them to our Tumblr asks, but you can also submit questions via this nifty survey that's linked in the show notes. The survey is totally optional, but we want to know who's listening to our show because it helps us reach more good folk like you. The survey also lets you enter our anniversary raffle, and we are giving away some pretty sweet swag, so you might want to do that. Again, the survey is linked in the show notes, and you can also access it by going to questfriendspodcast.com. That's all from me. The next episode of The Cookie Crew will air on Monday, October 15th. But between now and then, the next episode of the main campaign comes back on Monday, October 8th. So I will see you all then.
that is down on the ship. Um, and we are back to Aerith. I was planning on attacking Poppy, but go for it. E- Remember, your legs are feeling like jelly, so you're not you're not sure how you can attack from sitting down, but right. you're not sure how standing up would go for you. Right, which is why I think I'm going to bring in my duplicate to help with things. Woo! So, oh, that's right, your special power. Okay, you see the flickering lights from Ig, and my shadow kind of shivers for a second, and all of a sudden it disappears, and there is an exact duplicate of me behind Poppy. Um. With it, I can see her, right? Or I can see the space behind Poppy. Yeah, so that's where my duplicate appears. It is level two non-player character with six health. Um, oh, excellent! And I am just gonna have her kick it, <laughs> kick Poppy, have it kick her. Yeah, there we go. All right, <laughs> give me a roll. Yep. Oh my gosh! <laughs> How'd you do? Did you get a one? Yeah. <laughs> Van, my van. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mary. <laughs> Your duplicate has just come into being and is expected to kick immediately. Like, what is this? It, um... <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> So she will kick, but it's almost like your duplicate was just really excited to kick and, like, didn't know who they were even supposed to be kicking. So, um, instead of kicking Poppy, no. they'll kick the ice wall by mistake. Okay, that's fine. And then stub their toe. <laughs> that's also fine. And, <laughs> like, ugh! Oh, useless thing. Madeline's up next, but she is currently unconscious. <laughs> All right. Jean Quill, having just flipped over Aerith and done her, her like, jab. Yeah, jerk. Uh, is running inside the van, the door of which... I locked it! I locked it! You <laughs> She did lock it. I said that I did locked it. Did you lock it. it? Yep. You did? I did. Yes, she did. I remember. Like, after you went outside? Yeah, she did the clicky with the hand. So she can try all she wants. Okay, so... They're gonna have to cut her hand off. <laughs> don't, don't... Why, why even? Why even? Finding... <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. Um, finding it locked. Unhappily, she will actually GM intrusion on Hanalor. Uh, GM intrusions, Olivia, are like just when the GM I'm hate gets. This. <laughs> I'm so upset. Gets t- <laughs> GM intrusions are just when the GM gets to make a thing happen. Okay. Mm-hmm. The player does get an experience, and in this game, you can use experience to do cool things that we have ruled. You can trade. Forewarning: I'm using my experience to lock the van again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You also get to give an experience to, to another player. Uh, okay. I, I'll give an experience to, um, Aerith. Okay, so Aerith and Hanalore each have an XP because of my GM intrusion. Um, I did effing lock the... <laughs> no, 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 I think, I, I believe you. No, I'm saying I did lock the, um, the, what call it? The glove compartment? Glove compartment. Yes, I know. Okay. I believe that you locked it. The GM intrusion isn't that it's suddenly unlocked. She can't get it started. She can't get it started. She can't get it started, so it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what can do. <laughs> Can't even start the van. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Not important. Is that Jean Quill will instead flip over to you because you're all in like close range. She's gonna flip over to you, and she is going to jab at your hand. And the jab at your hand, because the key is embedded in your palm, Yep. she's going to jab at the hand. And because this is GM intrusion, she's just going to do it. <laughs> and um, that is going to be enough to do do do. <laughs> so the man <laughs> is now unlocked and she's going to flip straight back in, back into the van. I'm going to try to rip this woman limb from limb. <laughs> oh man, I'm so, so fired up. <laughs> okay. This poor van. My red Mary, what did she ever do to Anybody. Nothing. Shock goes inside the van. Uh, Ig, you're up. Oh, well, um... Don't go in the van while you're on fire. Yeah, no. <laughs> 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 this was a specific rule. Yeah, yeah, I would Lord. be so upset. I would be so... <laughs> <laughs> Why? What have I done? Um, so I... How far am I from the water? Um, you could get there in one turn if you ran. I'm trying to think of like... It's like 20 feet, 25 feet. Like it's, it's, you'd have to sprint to get there. Okay, yeah. Within a few seconds. It's, it's, uh, it's close, but it's like not immediate. Okay. Is anyone else in immediate danger? My van. Uh, well, I can't help you there. <laughs> I know. Madeline's kind of passed out on their ship. Yeah, Madeline's unconscious on the ship. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, go help her. <laughs> go get Madeline. I should uh, go. Can I go on the ship? You can try. Okay, I'm gonna try. You can roll to go 
on the ship. Sir, you're just sprinting on fire towards the pirate ship. <laughs> the light is flying Do everywhere. It. Oh my gosh, yes, kamikaze. Okay. First, I want to point back at the van and be like, one of them got in there. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> in case you didn't notice, Hannah Lore. <laughs> oh, I noticed. <laughs> Me and my duplicate face palm. I'm so aware. <laughs> And then I'm gonna say, guys, I got this! And sprint towards the ship. Got okay. it. And how are you going to try to get on the ship? Um, how did they get off the ship? Uh, Poppy used her, like, ice, used, like, her ice magic to propel her off. And then, uh, Jean Quill just did a series of, like, hardcore themed flips. <laughs> I don't know how to do either of those things. <laughs> you don't know either of those things. Oh. <laughs> improvise, egg, in- improvise. Burn the, burn the ship, burn it to ash. Hug the ship. It wasn't made out. Is made of wood. Wait, I want to look at Susan. Yeah, it's like a classic pirate I wanna ship. Look you want to light it on fire? No, I want to look at Susan. Okay. And I want to say, is your boat made of wood? <laughs> <laughs> Susan will like look around a little bit and then say, no. I think it is. What are you, a wood expert? <laughs> yep, that's wood. No, I was just curious because I was thinking like you've, you've got that lady on there that would shoot. Madeline. Mom, Madeline. Madeline. Mood, ma- many, m- ma- Handler screams from the, from the, the- Madeline! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, her. Yeah, she's up there, and I want her back. And you guys are in my new best friend's van. (laughs) And I want you not in there. So what if you guys give me back Madeline? Madeline. Madeline. M. M. M is bits easier. Get out of the van, and I won't start a light show. And I want to get my hand close enough to the ship that it like okay starts maybe to char a little bit okay susan will <laughs> lean on her club susan <laughs> sorry susan will like lean casually on her club and be like the thing is that we don't like madeline jeffrey james like at all you know you know jean jean quill jean kill was undefeated in the roller derby before murder line here came along murder line that's her that's her roller derby name oh, okay. <laughs> these things so clearly you don't like derby that's just the nature of competition what ma'am <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be best in, this is you're you who who raised you <laughs> my uncle <laughs> <laughs> Your uncle was a fool. He was a cross-legged, Don't... <laughs> buck-toothed fool. He didn't teach you consequences. This is how competition works. You don't just come in and hit someone's beautiful van because you lost in a roller derby match. That is very childish. Uncle Winston was a treasure. She Uncle back. Winston could eat my ass. <laughs> no, he didn't teach you any skills. It's turning to a roast. <laughs> Guys, there's just a very, it's a very practical road. <laughs> there's just so much going on, and I can't keep track of everything. Burn the ship. Okay, so now I'm Egg is holding her. Is it holding your fire hand next to the oh, ship? Oh yeah, I was talking as Egg. Oh yeah, totally. Like I know what's going on still. So Egg, you are not burning down the ship yet, but no, no, no. But like you're, but like it's charring. Yeah. And Susan looks nervous. Uh, so that's gonna be your turn. So we had the long interruption, and we are back up to Hanalore. Yeah, I'm gonna just abandon Poppy and uh and tackle the crap. <laughs> That's fair. Out of the person who is trying to get in my van, and I would really like to like su- like grab her around the middle and just like fling her back. Jeez. And I'm willing to use my experience point for it. I don't know if those are important or if okay. they roll over, but it's important to me right now. <laughs> I will say you can... Okay, she was, like, all the way through the door. I'm gonna grab her by her ankles, whatever it takes. Yes, you can do that. Just use your experience to automatically succeed in, like, attacking this person in your doorway. I I'm just ripping her... Okay, I also rolled a 20! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, so for that... I just rip her like a wet towel out of my van. <laughs> okay, yes, <laughs> you do. Can I kick the door shut? <laughs> wet towels are, like, notoriously hard to rip. No, no, okay. no, I whip it <laughs> like, like I whip... Like, whip it like a wet towel. Oh, whip yeah. it! I'm gonna okay. snap, her, like, snap her out like I'm trying uh, to get the moisture out of her. And can I kick the van door shut? You can. As you rip her out, she has, like, Spider-Man webs in her, um... She has, like, a bracelet that does, like, she doesn't use them to get around, which she should, because it's wicked cool. She just flips. You don't use your resources. As well, Sean. So as you pull her out, her webs have attached to the box of, of all the cookies that you <gasps> <have. gasps> 
Okay. So you you successfully pull her out, and you okay, just so just for the record, just for the record, uh, we didn't discuss this, yes. but this is how I'm imagining it. Um, I had imagined her previously getting in the front of the car, but I put the cookies in the in the trunk, so she's crawling into the trunk, and I'm whipping her out of the trunk. Please continue. Yes, she's crawling in. Yes. Okay. okay. Sorry, she's crawling yep. into the trunk, and she's whipping the cookies out. So as you whip her out, you also are whipping the cookies. Okay. Oh, no. uh, and I'm gonna say that the cookies will arc a little bit, and they will. I rolled a twenty. I know. So I'm thinking. So the cookies are actually because you rolled a twenty. The cookies are going to actually hit Poppy in the head on their way out. <laughs> the sharp corner hits her right in the eye. Causing, like, it's a really big box of yeah. all the collected cookies. So it's going to cause, like, four points of damage. Oh, uh, so just whacks her in the head. And she goes down. And Jean Quill is on top of her. Fling them onto each other. Um, the cookies will bounce a little bit further. But they're still connected via tether mm-hmm. to Jean Quill's wrist thing. I am menacingly approaching with my wrench. But at the end of my turn. <laughs> okay. I, my chest is heaving. My eyes are alight. And I'm going to... Lock it again. <laughs> okay, it is now Poppy's turn. Poppy uh, isn't knocked out from that hit. She is going to stumble to her feet, look at the box of cookies that just nailed her in the face, uh, say, oh, cookies! And then shoot ice at the cookies so that they're, like, encased in a new box of ice. <laughs> and then she will push that box of ice so that it just slides all the way over towards where Ig is. So it's approaching from behind you, and she kicked it. So it's just this sliding block of ice. <laughs> oh, jeez. Approaching Ig from behind so I would like Ig oh. to roll a defense, keeping in mind that you have, hang on, plus two armor. The tasks in, you have plus two armor, but tasks in noticing danger are also <laughs> one step harder. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good luck, buddy. Fine, this is, oh, 15. 15, okay. So you can hear this, like, sound, that's obviously the sound that ice cookies make. Obviously. They're sliding across, uh, across the pathway. And you are able to step aside in time for the cookies not to hit you. Still keeping your hand on the boat, like you're still burning it. So you don't get hit. Susan, having faced the cookies, can like see where they're coming from. And she is going to, uh, her club is a gun, but it is also like one of those like grabber things. Like you see, not quite like a like like, dinosaur head thing. Yes, like the dinosaur head, like a more sophisticated version of the dinosaur head. And she's just going to clamp down. The dinosaur from the butter churn dream. (laughs) No, it it was foreshadowed. I told you it was the future. (laughs) I didn't believe you at all. Not for one second. (laughs) So she's got the cookies on the boat now. Uh, now it's Arif's turn. All right. Um, Fix it, Arif. Gosh. Make everything better. You have an experience thingamabob. I don't even know what to do. So first thing I'll do is command the duplicate to attempt to board the ship and take back the cookies. Okay. <laughs> Your duplicate, having just stubbed her toe, is like still holding her toe. <laughs> She's fine. It was ice. And she'd be like... Fine. And then she'll, like, put on her toe and, like, be sort of dramatic about it. Like like a toddler, yeah. Feeling a little bit like, no, I'm okay. And then she will take off running after the ship. Uh, in the meantime, I will send off a buzzer towards... Susan took the cookies, right? Yeah, Susan has the cookies on the boat. I will send a buzzer off. I'm going to stay on the ground, too, this whole time. I'm just okay. chilling. You're not standing up. Maybe, like, shaking my legs a little bit to make sure they're still working. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to shoot off another buzzer towards Susan to hopefully help my duplicate in, you know, getting the cookies back. Right. Using an actual dice this time. Let's... There we go. Oh, 18. There we go. That is so yeah. much better. 18. Okay, yeah. You will nail Susan. Just like, you'll actually hit her like in the hand. Like, she's holding the box, like the giant icy crate as best she can because it's ice and it's already slippery. So you'll hit her hand and she'll like drop the ice box of cookies and it will teeter precariously <laughs> on the edge of the boat. Is it gonna <laughs> fall? Is it gonna tip back out of the boat? Oh, Who geez. knows? They're already encased in ice. They'll definitely float. Wait, uh, in the future, is ice heavier than water? Yes. It's gonna sink? Physics? No. I don't know if it falls off. Do physics change over time? I don't know. <laughs> ice floats in water. I'm sorry, I'm just teasing. The ice is teetering on the boat. <laughs> your duplicate makes it, and do you want to try to catch the cookies with your duplicate? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Hopefully it sort of tips over. Like, it's still teetering. Like, it's not yeah. falling either way, so she can make an action to make it fall towards her or to grab them. I mean, the integrity of the cookies are already kind of shot. I mean, they were packed really well, so like, okay. it's, and the, so the cookie boxes are inside another box, which is inside ice. Okay, then I'm gonna try to make it fall off the ship. It'll shatter the ice. Okay. Worst case scenario. Okay. Does your duplicate have any of your weapons, right? Like, it's just a duplicate of you? No, it has no clothing or possessions. <laughs> <laughs> She's new? <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna 
just say for uh, PG-13's sake, she's a shadow, Ooh. so... I'm okay with, like, the Peter Pan angle, yeah. so we'll just say she's, like, a shadow area. Yeah. She's just silently... <laughs> kind of like a heartless version. Yeah, like a heartless yeah. version. So, heartless version, shadow Aerith, having nothing, <laughs> is just gonna, <laughs> Wearing like, nothing, shaking the ship. Make a roll for me. Ooh, that's another 18! 18. 18! Okay. Your duplicate will, like, the only tool she currently has is Ig, who is standing with her hand <laughs> against the boat. So the shadow is going to roll up and just, like, run up Ig and use her as a human propellant and go for the cookies. And the she'll actually, she'll use the toe she just stubbed <laughs> to, like, kick the boat oh, in man. such a way so that it her. makes the cookies fall towards you again. Okay, wonderful. However, this means the cookies are now falling directly on top of Ig. So, Ig, please roll me another their speed defense. Break the fall with your body. <laughs> I'm on fire! It'll melt the ice! Okay, I rolled a 16. Oh, good. A 16? Okay, so you, do you want to just step aside and keep your hand burning the boat, or do you want to, like, turn your hand up to burn the ice off of the thing as it comes down towards you, and then move to the side? We could flavor this either way. Yeah. I would like to step to the side to keep my hand on the boat. Okay, you can do that. So you step to the side and the cookies will land next to you. With my other hand, I'd like to to just pat them a little bit into the greeting. <laughs> okay, like, yes, the cookies. Which brings us to Madeline, who was on. And then that brings us to Jean Quill, who was just savagely ripped out of the van by Hanalore. Beautifully ripped out, I would say. She is still collecting herself. Yeah, got effing right. But she is going to flip back to the boat. And she, flipping her way on the boat, is going to attempt to grab the cookies. Oh, because they're on the ground. So on her way back to the boat, she's gonna like... She's gonna like pick them up and flip on? Yep, she can do that. She's like Ty Lee from Avatar. Mm. She can do pretty much anything. <laughs> she does it. <laughs> but as she does it, she gets the box, but like it's kind of like a little bit wet from Boy. like the ice has just been everywhere and like human hands have held it. There's ink is on fire directly next to it. Yeah. So the edges of it are frayed a little bit and as she will hop onto the boat, a single box of cookies will fall out <gasps> on land. It's like the medicine from Balto. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> A single one, like the medicine from Balto, will oh, fall F. onto F and A, guys. the <laughs> land part. But she is now on the ship with everything. And I'm not saying that I don't remember where Poppy is, but where is Poppy? Poppy <laughs> was uh, hit with her friend, uh, John Quill. Yeah, John Quill. And uh, she is being menaced by a tall woman with a wrench. That's right, she was... Like, this wrench is like the length of a femur. It's no joke. <laughs> I'm a mechanic. What did Poppy do after your turn, Hanalore? Hanal what did she do for my turn? Yeah, what did she do after your turn? I can't remember. What did she do for when I when I well, I I just know that I ripped Jean Quill out of the She put the cookies in the ice. Yeah, she did. She put the cookies in the ice and then she kicked them. That's what she did. Okay, I couldn't remember where she was. Okay, so she is still by you guys. Okay. Ig, you're up. I've lost patience. <laughs> and so I I patted the cookies, but obviously they're gone now. So I have a free hand. Yep. Just the one box. There's one box. I want to press the hand that I had kind of against it fully on the ship and put my other hand to on the it. ship. Hell okay. yeah. And it, okay. And your fire has been doing damage. Like it's a, a, it's like a sizable ship. So burning a small section of outside wood that is in the bottom doesn't like ruin its, its integrity ability to float. Yeah. Integrity. Um, but it's like, it's like, it's catching a little bit and it's spreading so that it is starting to affect the integrity. Yes. Sink it, sink it. So now we are up to Hanalore. All right, dope. I'm going to clobber uh, Poppy over the head with my wrench. Okay, roll for me. Uh, oh, shice. Six. I sw okay, so I take my wrench. I big, big, mighty swing towards her. Yeah. Towards Poppy. She is going to duck again. She's so slippery. And slide out. And she is now seeing her two companions on the ship is just like frozen icing her way back to the pirate ship. Ugh. Can I pursue? You can. Mm -hmm. I am in pursuit. Poppy's turn is now. Uh, so with her turn, she's going to reach the ship uh, and like ice her way into it. And after Poppy's turn is Susan, who is just gonna start like hoisting anchor and Ugh. turning like the giant steel wheel that ships have. So they are pulling away. All right, folks, uh, I say uh, we need to get Madeline and the cookies, right? Uh, I'm going to put a focus on Madeline because she's a human person. Uh, anyone else wants to do something else, go for it. I'm going to try to get Madeline. I got a duplicate up there already, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you said Susan was the one that started to hoist anchor, right? Yeah, so the ship is like in motion. It is moving. Right. Oh, okay. Can I call up to them really quick? So uh, I, you might not want to go deeper. <laughs> it, you guys were taking a really long time, 
and then you stole the cookies, and then I decided to set it on fire. And, and I would just suggest staying closer to the shore in case the ship sinks, so that way you don't drown. I work on automobiles, not uh, rowboats, but I feel like you're gonna need to have your rowboat not on fire. It's true. It's Eric's turn, but Poppy does have a response. So Poppy is gonna like, give you a smug look, and then she'll fire up her water hands. But we'll handle that when we get back to your turn, because uh, Eric is up. Um, what what is on the deck of the ship? Uh, there's like a mast. Because my duplicate's up there with nothing. Your duplicate's not on the ship. She kicked the ship and then fell back to shore. Oh. Okay. With because the cookies were on the shore. Yeah. Oh. So you can't see the deck, but there's nothing. I mean, normal ship stuff. I thought she deck. climbed up Ig. She climbed up Ig, and then she kicked the side of the ship to make the cookies fall down. Oh. Oh. Okay. With her stubbed toe. Yes. She's a boss. Can she see what box of cookies fell out? What type of cookies? Was it the Queen's cookies or was it just a generic crappy brand? They were Snapoas. Of course. The worst kind. Let it go, right? Mm, right, we don't need that one, but we need the rest. She has nothing. Uh, I don't want to waste my action to try to get up. Uh, what else can I do? Hmm. You know, I think I'm going to try another onslaught mind slice on whoever's holding the box. Is somebody holding it right now or they've set it on the deck? The person holding it is Jean Quill. Okay. I would like to mind slice her in hopes that she will drop it over the edge of the ship, if that's where she's standing near, like taunting us. She's on the middle of the deck. Dang it. But give me a roll. Okay. That's three. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Uh, let's say you tried to like. Yeah, I was trying to say something like maybe confuse her so she would drop the cookies. You were trying to confuse her. Okay. Um, the confusion is going to work the opposite way you intended. Oh. And she's gonna like see through it. She's she's gonna drop the cookies, but they're gonna still be like uh, the opposite way that you wanted it to be. <laughs> they're like further in, further the, middle in the middle of the deck Ugh. now. Okay. Uh, Madeline is still unconscious, and now it is Jean Quill's turn, and she- Oh, but tight, you duplicate! Yeah, because I hadn't decided what to do with her yet. Yeah, what's your shadow doing? Did she try to get on top of the ship again? Yes. Is she just trying- Yeah. It's gonna be a jump. And I think she she has, like, no stats, essentially, except health. <laughs> so. She does- whatever she does, she does it with exemplary health. Yes. You know? That's a six. I'm thinking- <laughs> She tries her best. She really tries. Like, she uses Ig again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. As like a jumping off point. But the ship is far enough away that she'll get like halfway through the arc and then just do a, a straight cartoon plummet <laughs> into the water. And then that will bring us to Jean Quill's turn. And Jean Quill has kicked the boat into high drive. So the boat is on its way. And that is the end of combat. Uh, wait, Madeline's still on there? Madeline is still on there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, you now are minus one box of cookies. No. Minus all but one. You minus all, all of you. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> the shut up and that's so your task now is to negotiate a peace treaty without a diplomat or the cookies you were supposed to sell. I can you have a single box to sell. Um, my car can float. Uh, everyone start packing up your shit because we're, we're in pursuit. This <laughs> boat is on fire. It's on fire, man. I'll follow its ash. Uh, the ship's already... It's on fire, but Poppy is, like, watering the fire away. So we're not So it's shard. You did damage on it. They're gonna have to get it fixed in, like, a port. Like, you slowed them down, but they're, like, for all intents and purposes, they are on the horizon. Yeah, so we're not gonna catch it. What's the next, what's the closest port? What's the next what? What's the closest port? The closest port is, ironically, Pike's Bay. Pike's Head. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. I'm gonna, Hanalor is gonna just scream in anger after that ship and pick up the box of stupid cookies and walk back to the van and just chuck it in the back. <laughs> Are my legs feeling better? Yeah, they feel better. Okay. Looks like I really am the expert this time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hanalar is going to try to get the ice peck out of the out of the Red Mary again. Uh, it started to melt a little bit, so it's significantly easier. All right, shall I roll for it? You can. Yep. Eighteen. Yeah, you get it out. All right, I, I fling it into the sea in a fit of rage. Now that her like now that the nano itself is not is not present, the magic is kind of like fading. So y your van is wet. There are a few dings that weren't there before, but it is still solid. It didn't poke a hole through it. It's fine. Oh, it slammed into it. it. Okay. Like. 
dented it. All right, I'm just gonna like touch touch all of it, I'm, and I'm speaking to the I'm speaking to Red Mary, just like comforting soft words. Gonna put a gentle hand on Hanalor's shoulder and say, "I know this is a difficult time for you, but do you know if we can pursue them?" <sighs> yeah, um, Van, uh, I've been working on it. It can uh, got some floating technology that I've been working on. Um, it won't hold water, but can float above it. Is <laughs> in the closest. Uh, I, I do. She's proficient in maps and stuff like that, so she would know that Pike's Head is the closest. Pike's Head is the closest port, so if my boat was on fire, I guess that's where I would go to get it fixed. Wonderful. Would it be quicker to drive or to attempt directly pursuing them, do you believe? I consult my map. <laughs> <laughs> you would know that it would probably be quicker to drive, especially if your floating technology isn't like all there yet. It would probably be quicker to drive. Mm -hmm. I propose we head straight there and prepare to meet them at the docks. All right. I am Hanalore is like packing up with Red Mary very upset. <laughs> Are we in agreement with this? I'm I'm good for that. Yeah.